honest with you it's very fitting considering a couple of things uh, one you're talking about a, a year in which we've gotten all four defenders with their own show like all four defenders back to back to back we've seen all their shows and different glories and all four defenders have had varying degrees of progress in terms of their characterization um, you know Jessica Jones season two we saw her character kind of basically take a turn for the better in terms of not being the asshole person that we've come to know and stuff. She's gotten better in terms of her interaction with people versus some of the other characters in the show that have kind of made a bit of a turn differently, so to speak. But, you know, season two, mixed bag as it was, you saw a character turn there. Um, with Luke Cage season two, you know, we saw Luke finding himself and making amends with his dad and then we kind of see where he lands at in the spectrum of everything that he was fighting for particularly in being Harlem's protector and we saw how that season ended um with Iron Fist season two which you know just came out uh, not even like a month ago uh we saw this character kind of make a big turn for the best too because he's another character that kind of basically got progressively better and made huge strides from character progression wise and we even seen it with you know Colleen and stuff so we've seen all these character progressions and things like that and we get into the Daredevil, Daredevil, Daredevil season 3 and you could say that season 3 is basically a return to form and I say that because in season 1 you know probably one of a lot of folks' best favorite seasons and such you know, with 13 episodes, it was paced in such a way that it was a slow burn, but you were getting a lot of payoff from that slow burn. Um, season two, whether you liked, whether you, you know, mixed bag as it was for some folks and stuff, there was also a slow burn there. But I think the overarching issue with season two is that it was doing a lot to balance, you know, the, the, the Punisher subplot to kind of spin him off into his little story. And then we're dealing with Electra and the hand and the build up to defenders and stuff like that. So season two was very busy. And when it, since it was very busy, you didn't get much of a way of more in-depth stuff with Kingpin, even though it was doing a lot of setup. And what you saw at the end of season two with that confrontation with Matt and Fisk, it was very interesting. And you immediately knew right then and there, oh, crap, something's going to happen. We, we might get something. And what you remember at the end of D Defenders, if you've seen the post credit sequence and stuff, you know, you're thinking Matt's dead. Turns out, boom, you know, he's inside his, um, he's somewhere, and he's being tended to by uh, Sister Maggie. So season three of Daredevil picks up after Defenders, and, you know, basically, I would say it, it felt like more of a, pick up from season two than Defenders just from the aspect of how this season is this season three is paced out but anyway so at the end of Defenders you know we see we saw in the post credit sequence that Matt basically was being cared for by Sister Maggie and at the outset of this season we see how that came to be and stuff and what's interesting about I guess going through it real quick and stuff with all these different things because again I don't want to spoil it for folks I definitely feel that you should watch it and yes this is a 13 episode season um, unlike the 10 that we got with Iron Fist we got 13 with this one which I gotta be honest with you I feel this works for Daredevil because they for, maybe because it's the, it's the writing and all that stuff or maybe because the character and the world that it lends itself to but they do a phenomenal job of being able to slowly pace themselves and that might be a very much a hit or miss thing because some people might like it some people won't 
but I think it works for Daredevil because it allows you to expand on certain character nuances and you introduce all these characters and you're able to do a lot of things that allows you to really get into the meat of you know Matt or you know Foggy or Karen and such but anyway so Matt you know we what's interesting about his little thing is that he is struggling with essentially one he's in a bit of a disorientation so to speak um you know everybody thinks he's dead and he's just struggling to come to terms with what happened at the end of defenders particularly with electra and such and he's basically trying to get back on the good foot get back on get, get back into the swing of things and stuff telling his friends that he's alive um you know should he be daredevil and stuff and i'll swing back around that but it was interesting especially when it came to his interactions with sister maggie and stuff now just before i continue season three takes its cues from a huge storyline from the comics born again which was probably one of the great arcs of daredevil and stuff um a lot of it had to do majority of it had to do with basically king fisk and see kingpin but fisk and matt just beefing with one another and fisk basically making matt's life a living hell and basically everybody that is in that is intertwined with matt a life a living hell and what's cool is that in this season like you know fisk he's in jail and because he's who he is he has these privileges but while he's in jail somebody's trying to kill him and he ends up working with the fbi to basically divulge information he has to be put in witness protection and with all this you get a character by the name of uh raul nadim who is an fbi agent who he just wants to provide for his family um you know his backstory on why he is who he is it's very good it's I, i think it's pretty interesting it provides a bit of nuance and it's not as like cut and dry it's it's a very much when you see his motivations and why he does what he does you can see how this stuff with fisk wanting to work with the fbi works out for him because fisk since he has people trying to kill him he makes a deal with the fbi to get dirt on the albanians gangsters and stuff which is a bit of a plot thread from season one a little bit of season two with the gang turf war and all that stuff so fisk is free so to speak, even though he's in witness protection. And this kind of kicks off everything, whether Matt sees the fact that Fisk is out and now he's just like, yo, Fisk got to go. And Fisk, who is such a devious bad guy, he's doing his due diligence on trying to figure out who's Daredevil. Because, you know, if you remember in season two, he had that conversation with Matt and how Matt hit him and just their interaction and stuff, he's definitely trying to figure out who Matt is. And and also, too, at the same time, in the middle of him working with the FBI, he's trying to protect his wife, Vanessa. So you see what King, we see what Fisk is trying to do, but it's still along the lines of he's up to no good kind of thing. And I think that's also cool because with Fisk getting out, you have characters like Foggy. Foggy is just, like, losing it. Uh, and, and his arc in this season is very interesting, especially where it goes. Karen too; she's another character who she's she's been pulled all over the place. You're talking about a character that had to deal with Ben Urich dying. She, you know, she killed one of Fisk's uh, uh, um, dudes and stuff, and she's reeling from. She's been reeling from that. Then everything that happened in season two, everything that happened, to defenders of Matt dying, her dealing with stuff, and and you know with with um, Frank and Daredevil and, and Punisher, she's been a busy person, and you know with Matt quote unquote dying, she's been kind of stuck with trying to fix his place, you know, and it's interesting seeing how she's going through it. And you're sitting back like, man, when is the shoe other shoe going to drop? But thankfully, I know a lot of folks felt that Karen was such an annoying character. Thankfully, this season, 
you could say that she isn't annoying. She she definitely you feel for her, and you feel for the fact that Matt's you know quote unquote death kind of hit people differently. You know, Foggy is trying to be a better person, and you know, like I said, with his arc and what you see, and again, not spoiling anything here you see where it's coming from you know you get a little bit of background with foggy's uh family that's actually a pretty interesting angle too uh karen her interaction with a newspaper and her trying to find the truth and like i said with fisk being quote out of jail it hits foggy and karen just as hard as it hits matt because this is a guy that's made their life a living hell in variety of ways and now this guy's out and they're like no we can't do this um now <clears throat> I'm not going to spoil this because I'm already a little mad that Netflix put out a YouTube video of this character. So Bullseye. Um, I'll say this about Bullseye. Bullseye, I, I'll say this. Uh, one of the greatest things that I think Marvel has done with their bad guy, their villains for the most part, is that they're able to give you backgrounds on them to the extent to where either a you understand why they are, why they are fucked up the way they are and b you elicit some emotion to an extent but not enough to want to sit there and say oh man i feel sorry for him and stuff and what they do with bullseye i think is very interesting and very different because it isn't a typical if you, if you remember uh colin colin farrell in the <laughs> ben affleck one it, it, it was just kind of like, hey, he's just some crazy, crazy Irishman or whatever and stuff that kills people. But you never understood what made him tick. Like if you read the, read the comics and stuff, you know, I guess you could say Colin Farrell's their bullseye was passable in a very cheesy, over the top way. But what they do with bullseye in this, it's it's really good. Um, <laughs> and... <coughs> And you kind of understand, you can, you understand why he is the way he is, why he's comes to be this person that he is, and it explains everything, like his power, like his power, or well, his abilities. I don't want to say powers, but his abilities and just his mental capacity and stuff. It's really good. Um, and to be honest and stuff, when you're watching the show, you're sitting up there trying to figure out who could Bullseye possibly be right and when you see it you're just like him and then you get the background on this person and it's like oh oh okay you know and bullseye's relation to kingpin when you with fist slash kingpin when you see it it's just like oh okay I, I like this i like this dynamic between these two and it's great it, it is so great so much so when you get to that point <clears throat> where you see Bullseye and Matt finally mix it up and stuff, it, it ends up being such a huge payoff seeing all this happen. Because they don't just throw you into the mix straight up with no context behind it. It's like there's context behind why Bullseye is the way he is and how he hooks up with Fisk and how he intertwines with his fight with Matt and how they are you know how they both have different paths and stuff in their interactions with Fisk as well. So again, that's not spoiling the character or anything like that. But when you see it and you watch it, you're like, okay, this is actually good. And and that's and that speaks to the larger overarching theme of season three and the fact that it is very much a slow burn. But again, like I said earlier. Daredevil has always been pretty good with a slow burn. So, at the, but at the same time, I can understand how a person could sit there and look at this and be like, "Why would I want to sit here and deal with this lengthy slow burn thing?" But I feel Daredevil has gotten such a good will and has been such a great show that the slow burn works in its favor. Because, you know, we had Iron Fist with season two. It was 10 episodes. And it was paced in such a way that those 10 ep the 10 episodes worked for it. Um, we saw in Defenders, it was eight episodes. That worked in the favor of the show. Some people might disagree and think that it should have been 10 episodes, but it is what it is. Um, hold on.
The point is, is that this is a 13 episode season. <clears throat> and if you were used to Iron Fist 10 episodes, 13 episodes might be something that you might be sitting there like, mm, I don't know if I want to go to 13 episodes, but I felt Daredevil has brought such goodwill to itself in terms of, the, you know, the, the material that it's doing and things that it's going for that it gets the benefit of the doubt of being able to do that slow burn to because you know the story is going to pay off. And it definitely pays off in this season as well. Uh, um, Matt, if you know, he's in his black suit. And it, and it fit, like I said, it fits the theme of this season being back to basics. You know, back just a back to basics approach. You know, I know I see a lot of people sit there and say, well, you know, it's very back to basics. Because you're going to hear this a lot. People saying it's back to basics. There's no connection to the MCU and da 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 da. And I'm like, well, these Netflix shows have always functioned in the MCU and you got your connections but they do such a great job of just doing the connections in such a very way that it doesn't take away from the story much like the comics it's, that's just what it is um, but yeah all the characters they go through their arc and like I said I think the, the whole thing of Fisk getting out of jail it, you definitely see it, how it affects everybody across the board um, hold on for a sec but um you see how him basically being out of jail, it affected everybody. Going back to the FBI agent that is kind of helping out with him, uh, Ray. You see Fisk having to stay alive under this care and how it affects him and his job and stuff. Because like I said, again, not spoiling this stuff, but when you see the rhyme and reason for why he's being this ambitious FBI agent you're rooting for him to an extent to get kind of sort of a win out of this whole thing. And you're rooting for him. You definitely are. Um, and I think overall, this is this is going to definitely be a great season. Um, not going to give it a grade. I, you know, I'll probably, I'll save that for the spoiler discussion when the show comes out and everybody has seen it. But I will say for right now, um, all signs point to this is definitely a must-see. You will definitely love it. You would definitely like it. Um, like I said, it's based off the Born Again storyline this season. So, hey, if you want to get a primer on the Born Again storyline, I believe it's like Daredevil number 227 through 233. So, yeah, I think if you can get it in graphic novel form, that would probably be the easier way to do it. But it's definitely a storyline that this season is loosely based on. So, if you're expecting it to be a one-for-one one, like the comic and stuff, don't. But you see echoes of them adapting that storyline and retooling it for this season and stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely overall great season. Uh, definitely worth checking out when it drops fully and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, I will catch you guys later. And peace out.